Across the country, a collection of independents are trying to influence the political process, energising their communities to recreate scenes like this on May 21. Zali Stegel managed to unseat a former Prime Minister three years ago. Tonight, Warringah has definitely voted for the future. The so-called Teal candidates are mostly women contesting safe Liberal seats. Hi, I'm Sophie Scombs. Because, because it's our, our future, future and not theirs. I'm Dr Monique Ryan and I'm your independent candidate for Kuyong. I think Boothby is wide open. They're running professional campaigns with lots of volunteers, financially backed by an organisation founded by one of Australia's richest men. And many of them are giving inner city Liberal sitting members a scare. Now the fake independents are fake because they're organised and acting as a political party. In no way are we a party. As I've said before, we don't start campaigns, we don't select candidates. The independents are hoping to make the most of growing disillusionment with the major parties and succeed where other minor parties have struggled in the House of Representatives. People are not necessarily now wanting to see other parties fill the space as much as they are realising that local independents will be more responsive to their electorates. So, are we at the tipping point? This isn't the first time minor parties and independents have had high hopes. Is this the year the ranks of the crossbench swell and independents crash the party? Let's start with the inroads that candidates who aren't from Labor or the Coalition have been making. Votes have been slipping away from the two major parties and into the hands of minor parties and independents. But it's not happened overnight. The third party vote for the lower house has doubled from 12% to more than 25% since 2007. And because of the way our election system works, that 25% of the vote in 2019 translated to just six seats in the house or about 4% of elected members. It's a decline in the major party vote that's only going one way and that's down. And the national polls suggest there's a very good chance that non-major party vote climbs again this year. But of course, that vote is split between candidates with all sorts of political views. Insane cult of vaccinists that have taken control of our health bureaucracies. And making the big coal corporations start to pay for some of the damage that their product has caused. And it's not the national vote that matters in individual seats, it's how much of the vote gets concentrated on a single candidate. In the 90s, the first minor party rock stars were the Democrats. I believe they wanted a change. Then came One Nation, getting 9% of the vote in the first election it contested, in 98. So close that many of them can almost smell the victory. Before also disintegrating. Well, I don't think it's a matter of who takes the blame. Although, since Pauline Hanson's return to the party's leadership, its vote has risen again from near zero to about 3%. That's unfinished business for me. The biggest minor party since 2004 has been the Greens, but they've been unable to exceed their 2010 vote in the three elections since then. And in the same period, votes parked with other small parties and independent candidates, they've grown from 7% to nearly 12. That includes about 3.5% for the United Australia Party last election. Of all the challenges, the most likely prospects to win a new seat off the major parties this time are the inner city independents and the Greens, both of whom have some very similar key issues. So, why would the Teal independents succeed where the Greens haven't? Climate change has become a mainstream agenda item and that there are a lot of climate independents and others who are now representing the issue without any party political or underlying ideological baggage. And I think that's actually refreshing for people. It's not a pseudo-political party, it is a political party. I mean, if you're funded by the same people, if you're running the same strategy, if you're using the same uh, technology platforms, the same consulting groups, um, you know, 
Uh, Climate 200 is just the next chapter in the book of Get Up. That's what we're seeing being played out here and around the country. It's dishonest. It's dishonest. Even though the Greens got a lower national vote last election than 2010, they're arguably closer to winning more lower house seats than back then. Now, they've concentrated their campaigns on a handful of targets. They polled over 20% in a dozen seats last election. Three in Brisbane, the seat covering the CBD, Griffith over the Brisbane River and Ryan. One in Sydney, Anthony Albanese's inner west seat of Graindler. There's one in Canberra as well, but most of the seats are in Melbourne, including the seat of Melbourne, where Adam Bant got nearly half the primary vote in 2019. How much are Climate 200 candidates eating into donations that would otherwise help your campaign? Look, I welcome the entrance of the climate independence into the democratic race. The more voices that are pointing out Liberal and Labor's a poor record on climate, the better. But we're actually not really in competition with the climate independence in any seats. The Greens are avoiding competition by not going into electorates where they're going to encounter too many independents. Demographics could also be a factor. The independents and Greens seem to be going after different groups. Seats being targeted by independents tend to be older than the Greens' strongholds, with a median age about five years higher. Household incomes in those inner city independent targets are also higher. For the independents to have much chance of beating their Liberal incumbents, they'll need to peel some of the vote away from them, getting the MPs down to about 45% or lower, and get their own primary vote to at least 30%. From there, they'd hope to pick up the bulk of preferences from other candidates to win. The more of them that do win seats, the more likely it is we end up with a hung parliament. We have the Simon Holmes Court Climate 200 candidates refusing to be upfront with their own constituents, the people they want to vote for them, and not telling them who they would back in the event of a hung parliament, which is their stated goal. The independents will form their own opinion on which party is able to deliver on the issues that that they have a mandate for. So this is absolutely a decision for each of them individually. Just like 2010. Evening all. <laughs> and then we could be hanging on their every word, waiting for them to determine the next PM. So we're gonna have a good hearty meeting and more than likely continue tomorrow morning.